Olive Oatman was perhaps one of the most famous captives among white women. Let me retell you her story. Olive was only 13 or 14 years old in 1851 when the lone wagon of her father and her husband, California-bound immigrants who had recklessly pressed on ahead of their companions trying to make time. They were attacked by the Yavapaw Indians in a desolate part of the Gila River. Everyone was knocked dead on the head with war clubs, except Olive and her sister Mary Ann, who was age seven at the time. They were carried off to service slave laborers. A year later, their captors sold them to the Mojave Indians. They walked the girls north to their settlement on the Colorado River. It was there that they were received slightly better. They were treated with a little more respect, fewer beatings, and they were even allowed to grow their own corns and melon. But in 1853, a terrible thing happened. Famine struck the area, killing many of the tribe. They'd starved to death, including frail little Mary Ann, her nine-year-old sister at the time. But Olive was not alone in the world. It seemed that her brother, Lorenzo, who had been left for dead at the scene of the massacre, had survived, and he made his way to safety. Immediately, he started a five-year search for his younger sister that turned up a Yuma Indian who knew of Olive's whereabouts, and through some payment, he made arrangements for her release. In Indian garments, her skin burned brown by the sun, Olive Oatman was barely recognizable when she reached her brother at Fort Yuma. She would not speak, but sat with her face buried in her hands, ashamed and fearful of white people. It took some months before she began to feel comfortable among the white people because they would stare at her because of her tattooed face. Well, eventually she overcame this and she even toured on lecture circuits and she submitted to being stared at by everyone and she even eventually married. But friend, remember that Olive Oatman was always quiet and reserved and that the great suffering of her early life set her apart from the world. It was more than just her suffering that set her apart from the other women. The Indians had left their physical mark on Olive's face. Like the Mojaves that she lived among, she had been horribly tattooed on her arms and her chin and along her jawline. For the rest of her life, she carried on her beautiful and yet serious face the emblems of her former bondage in captivity to the Indians. A long time ago, over 6,000 years, there lived a man and a woman named Adam and Eve. One day while Eve was walking in her garden, a lying serpent took her captive and led her into disobedience and sin. When Adam, her husband, found out instead of killing the wicked serpent, he took his wife's advice and believed the lie instead of the truth. He too partook of a fruit that was commanded by God not to be eaten of in the middle of the garden. Immediately sinning, both were captured and suffered great hardship, even worse than poor little Olive Oatman. For years, sin spread, and with sin, death and bloodshed. But God had a plan. Like Olive's brother Lorenzo, who searched for his sister, God began to search for his human creation. He searched their hearts to see if any would seek after him and return to him, looking for a way back. But all turned aside, except God had Noah and his sons and their wives. So God once again started a new world, but in time, man and women turned away. Finally, after about 4,000 years, he sent his very own self. He came through his son, Jesus Christ, to capture us back from that wicked serpent, Satan. And he set us free to return to our blessed Father. Many who have come back have been tattooed by the captivity of sin, and they still have scars in their hearts but Jesus still loves us, and he looks past those scars, like eventually the white people did to Olive Oatman, whose face had been horribly tattooed. Olive shared her testimony of her former days in captivity. She traveled the country lecturing about what it was like being an Indian slave girl. Like Olive, I too as an evangelist, as well as many other evangelists, go around telling what it's like being captive to sin and how Jesus came and rescued us from the slavery of sin and Satan. Perhaps most of you listening to this tape have been rescued and set free, but there are many still captured that need deliverance. Why don't you begin to lecture like Olive and myself 
and, and share with those around you how they can be set free in Christ Jesus, free from Satan and sin. Paul said it this way in Romans 8, 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear. Another word for bondage would be captivity. But we have received the spirit of adoption, where now we can cry, Abba, Father, or another word, Daddy, Daddy. If you are a Christian and born again, you've been adopted by God, set free. You can live a new life free in Christ Jesus. Tell others about that freedom. Just don't keep it to yourself. I'd like to sing a song about being set free. He took us out of the kingdom of darkness. He took me out of the kingdom of darkness and into his glorious light. I'm on the rock of salvation and I fear not day or night. I have his peace within my soul, and oh how the glories roll. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, praise God I'm free. He took me out of the kingdom of darkness and into his glorious light. I'm on the rock of salvation, and I fear not day or night. I have his peace within my soul, and oh how the glories roll. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, praise God I'm free.